Hello, Voices from the Bench community. Pat Kuhn from Ivaclar here. Innovation and education are inseparable partners in our profession, where continuous change offers you the opportunity to raise the bar of dental care and elevate what is clinically and technically possible. So we at Ivaclar have created Ivaclar Academy, where we support you through cutting edge educational programs and resources. We understand that you have busy schedules and individual preferences for learning. To help leverage your time and maximize your learning experience, the Academy has educational opportunities that are easily accessible and fit any learning style. Whether you are looking for an in-person program or for virtual education, Ivaclar Academy offers multi-channel opportunities that allow you to learn at home, in the classroom, in the office, or on the go. In addition, we offer CE accredited learning opportunities. You can receive a certificate of attendance for each CE eligible program or training course completed from the Ivaclar Academy. Simply log on to ivaclar.com and click on the Academy link located at the top of the page to get started. Happy learning. Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 314 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Morning Voice. Morning Voice. We're doing this on Saturday again. My name's Barbara, y'all, and I'm not awake, but I'm here. <laughs> Come on, Barb, wake up. <laughs> Drinking coffee. I get you. Me too. Me too. This is April Fool's Day, you know, when this episode comes out. So oh. we can play all sorts of tricks on people today. Damn. Can you actually still do that? Is that a thing? Uh, I don't know if people still do that. But a week from today, so April 8th, the solar eclipse happens. I'm sure you're aware. Not really. No, do they not talk about it in Florida? Because <laughs> where I live, we're in what's called a totality. Right? What's that mean? So only a certain section, like a dream through the United States, will have the full effect of the eclipse. Meaning complete darkness, and it goes right over Indianapolis. Ooh, that's cool. It's not going to happen again until 2044. And they're expecting unbelievable traffic, food shortages... Sold out hotels everywhere in our city. Are you serious? Yes. I guess people from all over the country are coming to the band of totality to watch this thing. That is crazy. Isn't it crazy? Hey, and that makes you special. So good for you. I'm just going to walk outside and check it out. Take a picture. I will try. I don't know. Won't it melt my phone? I don't know how it works. Or maybe your face. Or my face. <laughs> you need that face. You have a face for radio. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So what's going on this week? Well, since we're playing episodes from Lab Day Chicago, Barbara and I thought it was time to bring back the popular shirts and hoodies that we made for Lab Day Chicago this year. Elvis, do you know how many people ask me about that damn shirt? This is awesome. Yeah, almost every week we get either an email or a message asking if the shirts are still available. This was back in January when we sold these things, so they're still looking for them. I love it when people ask me that they know someone that wants to know if the shirts are still available. (laughs) Yep, I think I'm one of those people. I'm like, Elvis, come on, can't we relaunch it? Please, please, please. Yeah, so out of all the shirts that we have done over the years, this has certainly been the most popular. No doubt. So out of the weakness of everybody bugging us, we have brought them back just in time for spring. Nice. So head over to any of our social media pages or voicesfromthebench.com forward slash shirts for a link to purchase. All right, now everybody listen up. This sale ends on April 19th, and then you won't be able to get your shirt anymore. So tell everybody you know, just in time for you to have them as you join us in Spain for the ExoCAD Insights meeting on May 9th and 10th. Or, again, we're going to be at the FDLA meeting in Florida. Thank you, Jensen Dental, on June 7th and 8th. So remember, as always, all profits go towards the Foundation for Dental Laboratory, which I believe you're on the board now, right? I am. Congrats. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So remember, shirts, long sleeves, and the hoodies. I know it's getting warmer, but the hoodies are really nice. 
and they're really popular. And I wear mine at work and I gave one to my coworker. So we both wear them. Nice. So we are back this week with another collection of conversations we got while at Ivo Clark's Grand Ballroom at LMT Lab Day Chicago 2024. You know, one of the great things about recording at shows is we get to talk to people that we might never run into because we just don't know about them until the show. Or we run into them in the bathroom. I don't know what you do at Lab Day. (laughs) (laughs) Or we might get to talk to people we have been wanting to talk to and never had the chance. Or we even get to talk to past guests that come back to update us on the podcast. That's a lot of horrors. Yeah, but the great thing is this episode has all three. So first up is husband and wife team James and Sandy Kirk. Love them. Why they both own the lab, how they met is the real story. You see, she's a dentist from Chile, and they met while on a mission trip. And they talk about how they met, how they named their lab One Dental Lab, her quest to get her dental license in the U.S., and their plans for growth. Then the technicians dentist stopped by. We have been waiting to talk to Dr. Ed McLaren. Most people know of Dr. Ed McLaren. I know I do because I'm a ceramist. He's been teaching in the industry for a super long time. He's the dentist that spends more time doing technician work than clinical work. He talks about minimal invasive preps, the truth about bonding, why he favors Ivoclar, and all about his epic spoof move, <laughs> all about his epic spoof movies he makes that showcases technicians from around the world, and those are pretty hot, pretty amazing. Yeah, they're fun to watch. I think you geeked out on that part a little bit, a little bit. And then one of our favorite denturists sits down, Patrick Allen. Mm-hmm. I like the way you say that. Well, he deserves the extra umph. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick gives us an update on the Illinois Denturist Association road to becoming legal and also some of the other states starting on the same path. And then Patrick talks about his practice going digital, bringing more knowledge of the BPS suction denture technique to the U.S., and how Ivoclar is helping him. So join us from the Ivoclar Ballroom at Lab Day Chicago with Sandy and James Kirk, Dr. Ed McLaren, and Patrick Allen. Whether you're looking to elevate your craftsmanship or looking to cut back on cost, look no further. Vita MFT teeth are the ultimate solution for creating lifelike and stunning smiles. Crafted with precision and backed by cutting edge technology, Vita MFT teeth offer unparalleled aesthetics and durability. And since Vita believes in the power of experiencing excellence firsthand, for a limited time only, they are offering you the chance to get a complimentary case sample. That's right, a full case absolutely free. Just visit VitaNorthAmerica.com forward slash free. MFT. Don't wait any longer to start providing your customers a premium tooth at an economy price. Redeem your free case sample, and if you're ready to buy, Vita will even give you an extra 10% off discount by shopping online on their newly launched online store. Join the Vita family today, and we appreciate your support of the podcast. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. So this is super cool. Yes. We're at the Iva Clark Ballroom, Chicago Lab Day, 2024. Which is amazing, by it the is way. Amazing. Yep. <laughs> Iva yep. Clark set us up in a really nice spot. <laughs> the best spot, actually. James and, and Sandy Kirk came over, yep. introduced themselves, said they'd listen to the podcast. She's a dentist. Yes. He's a technician. Yeah. Yep. And they work together. Do they? Do you send your work to him? Well, I... <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we didn't ask that before. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm actually an international dentist. What does that wow. mean? I'm from Chile. Okay. And we, we met through Dentist 3. He was actually part of a mission trip, and I was one of the dentists working. Oh, how that's and a great was, story. Yeah. So, okay, let's, wow. let's, let's back up. I guess we can back up. <laughs> yeah, let's back up. So, were you a technician before? Yeah. So... 
let's yeah. start with you. How did you get into being a technician? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I was working for uh, uh, somebody, a dentist I know. He asked me, he's like, hey, I got this position at my practice. And, you know, he thought of me. And I just was a carpenter at that point. So you use your yeah. hands. That's yeah. a plus yeah. for Very sure. Artistic. We yeah. do a lot of nailing and dentistry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hammers. Yeah. <laughs> So he just said, yeah. why not give yeah. you a shot? That's and cool. so I came and checked it out, and it was just one step at a time. He taught yeah. you everything? Yeah, he, uh, so I learned a lot through him, and then I took a lot of specialty classes going out and oh, yeah. through okay. different companies and, and learning more all the time. Yeah. yeah, and you got your license in Chile? I got my license in Chile. I was practicing, and I heard this team of gringos. That's what we would call <laughs> them, a bunch of Americans. <laughs> yep. I gringos. love it. <laughs> So yeah, I was uh, I just recently graduated and I just helped out cuz I can speak English and English is obviously my first language. So 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 how did you get involved in the mission cuz I love giving yeah, back. Yeah, it's so through through a church, through my church and um, yeah, we they had gone there before doing dental missions before and I was always the doctor hired me and uh, I was like, "Yeah, when are we going to Chile? When are we going to Chile?" and, and so that's how yeah, we yeah. met. So yeah. what does a technician so do was on say, a mission trip? Yeah. Usually <laughs> they just Good yank question. teeth and filling, <laughs> yeah. right? I was actually more of like uh, just making sure the equipment was running. Okay. Like, you know, we didn't have problems or if there was any kind of, yeah, just more of like you a maintenance. Casting no. or making dentures. I know. I wish anything. that no. was the case. That would yeah. be awesome. This is mostly on missions. It's mostly, uh, you know, extractions and, you know. Filling. Yeah, fillings. So, and so what? Simple. You guys took a look at each other and fell madly it in love. It kind of happened what? that way. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now we got three kids and yeah, cool. and yeah. our own. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lab. Yeah, very our own lab. Yeah. lab. Yeah. 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 So you're in Chile and you were in Sorry, in Virginia. Up. Yeah. And you moved to Virginia? Yeah. So well, after we kind of yeah. had this back and forth online. Yeah. Uh, we just decided let's go for it, and Aww. we got married shortly after. Well, a, a year after. Yeah. And the rest is history. And you yeah. came from Chile all the way to Virginia. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh well, I actually grew up coming to the U.S., so that's why I could learn the language. Okay. okay. I, yeah, I I was familiarized with Virginia. We had yeah. friends. Nice. Um, we loved it. Yeah. I mean, I loved it, and now we live there in Virginia, and we love it. And you went through yeah. the boards to get your license. Oh again. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I bet yeah. that was fun. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, what so was that process like? Was yeah, that hard? Or? Oh well, the, I'd say technically it's all the same. It's just the stress of having to take this one test that you. I promised myself that I would never go through that again because in Chile it's a, it's the same. It's just a different language. But yeah, when yeah. I took yeah. the the leap, I had to do the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. So then you came here, you you started a office and then a lab or did you do a lab and how did that work? Well, yeah, so we started the lab first. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. So it's about 7 years now. Uh, and just one step, you know, one step at a time, I kind of transitioned my way out of carpentry into lab slowly. Did you build the lab? Yeah. And with your carpentry skills? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. did. <laughs> How did you come up with the name One Dental Lab? One Dental Lab, I actually, I, I give the name, it's, it's actually, God kind of got me into my job. And so he's the one. Oh, that I like that. Is, we so just the, make the tea. Yeah. <laughs> so I was one. like, it's all to him. Like, my, my skill comes from him, really. And, and I, yeah. I, I can't say I, I, I got myself into it because it really was him lead me into it. Like I, I Well, it's not surprising yeah. to hear yeah. you say that because yeah. you went on a mission. Yeah. That's sure. how you met. So yeah. obviously your faith is very yeah. important yeah. to you. Yeah. So I, I love that name. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So, Sandy, did you work in the lab while you are oh, yeah. yeah. your board oh, yeah. again? I kind of took over the whole removable <laughs> side of the lab, yeah. which was, you know, it's the one thing that dentists hate. Because you're like, oh, oh I so, know that. It's so unpredictable. <laughs> like, yep. I sit in my wax room and then the try, and it's great, and oh my gosh, so the, the final is so different. I'm like, it's actually not. <laughs> so, you're a technician also, a doctor and a technician. So, are you practicing still? In I am right now going to start my residency. So, it's a one oh, year residency. Wild. To able to be able to practice again, but Good I'm kind you. of already in the clinical work because I, I'm training dentists to actually make removable aspect a lot more easier and on they them. They need it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah, I had no idea how much we as dentists needed this yeah. in the field. Yeah, so, sure. yeah. so, what are you doing? You're teaching that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I go to yeah. We kind of partner with you as we work with them. I show them the best ways to get better results, predictable results. 
So yeah. as you get clients for the lab, you go to their chair yeah. side. Mm -hmm. Well, and I do a lot of chair side like pickups for locate when they place implants all on three, Is you know, all on four or five. You know, it's funny how much they can't do that. Oh, you're yeah. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> they it's have not, no clue. No clue. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> That's like a majority of my job is picking up locators. Yeah. Like, Isn't that crazy? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 but okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't go to school for this, but okay. <laughs> so is it just the two of you or do you have uh, uh, a team? We have a team. We have a team. Yep. Yep. How and many are in the lab? Well, we got eight. It's like eight. So. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that's yeah. not a small yeah. lab. Yeah, that's that's fairly yeah. decent. And we're training sucks. people all the time, and it's hard to find technicians, and, you know. No so we yeah. we just training, all, <laughs> trying to train as much and step yes. people. Along. Are you upset to lose an employee? When she's I good? know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do. Actually, A very very valuable one. <laughs> actually, we've recruited another doctor from Chile. We did. Yeah. One of my oh. good friends yeah. from Chile is yes. coming, and I said, "You want to come to the U.S. and just kind of run the removable aspect?" And I do more than that, obviously. Yeah. But if she can just. Hang yeah. tight to that. I yeah. think we'll be. And then as she gets her board, sure, you'll yeah. bring yeah. on another one. Yeah. Why not? I'm <laughs> all about it. Smart, actually. <laughs> Just keep growing them. Yeah. <laughs> so doctor yeah. technicians. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it works. What is dentistry like in Chile compared to America? I mean, can you speak it's, on that? Is it about the same? Not, it's about the same. Yeah. I mean, technology here, obviously, it's way yeah. above. And we have all of that, but I'd say probably 30% is digital when here we're seeing a lot more than that 30 yeah sure at my lab it's probably 80 90 already sure digital yeah impressions yeah. it's I crazy be, yeah. digital scans yeah, yeah not surprised i find myself oh just stuck in the, my digital island i call it, it yeah. i'm just it's there, there we're the like time. hey <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do mostly in the lab mostly design on three shape do and you? yet uh, partials Bridge, implant of crowns, full yeah, service. everything. Full yeah, service. it is a full yeah. service lab. Milling, printing. Is there anything hot you're looking for this weekend? Anything that you guys are checking out? Yeah, we're out? looking at the equipment and seeing what's new and everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, getting our feelers out there. And, you know, for her residency, I'm, I'm going to be starting another lab. So I'm, we're, we're looking at, like, branching, you know, branching off cool. and starting another one. So too. you're going to lose her and open up another <laughs> lab? Why not? What do you do? Uh, we, might yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well. Why not? Yeah. 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 Wow. Is the other lab going to be close? Are you moving? I mean, what uh, oh, no. It's staying open. Yeah. No, it's close. It's four oh. hours away from. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Oh, so hours. it's going to be, you're going to like drivers in between kind of yeah. situation. Yeah. Maybe yeah. once or twice a week, do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Is it it's another fantastic. part of Virginia that you just don't reach and that's the idea? Or why that location? Well, it's because our residency. Because that's yeah. where I'm going to be yeah. at. Yeah. It's yeah. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. So and you have no choice. You're going to run that lab during gotcha. residency? Yeah. I'll try well, no. my best. I'll try my best. You look like a darn good multitasker. <laughs> we so do have three kids as well. Yeah, I should what say the that. heck? We yeah. have three very small children. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your res so. res residency? Residency. Um, Eastville, Virginia. So okay. that's it's, it's in the Eastern Shore, kind of Virginia yeah. Beach area. What do you have to do? Like, explain what that means to me. Just work. It's just you're working under someone. So it's a rural, under uh, yeah, yeah, like health clinic. And it'll be NYU. So I'm just kind of there. And there. that lasts for six months? or A one? year. Oh, really? And yeah. then? And then I'll have my, my the okay. and so then I have to take the Virginia board test to practice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's a whole year. So it's I can see why you guys would. Yeah. Does every dentist have there? to do this? Or is oh, it because you came from another? No, there's very, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of internationals there that kind of find their way. You can go to specialty school if you, you know, yeah. I, I wow. actually thought of going to um, pros school yeah. because I, at this point, well, I'm so. Well, you're a removable Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. You would be really good so at it. So that was an option, but the downside is that you actually pay. You you got to go to school and yeah. pay instead of them paying you because as a resident, yeah, I would That's be. a no-brainer, right? So I'm like, yeah. well, I can try this, and I'm def my passion is definitely removable, so. And he's. Right. He's got the other side of the lab, so we kind of. Yeah. That's exactly what we need, though. Honestly, yeah. is yeah. is more doctors training doctors. Yes. Because yeah. it's just our yeah. weakest link. I feel as yeah. a. Yeah. Doctors don't have a clue about removable. Sorry. So true. Except for yeah. you. So true. I mean, <laughs> I'm a dentist, and I've seen it, and I'm like ashamed of my fellow dentist. I'm like, why? How did this happen? Yeah. yeah. What's your plan after the residency? You looking to open up your own practice? Probably. One dental office? Is that what you're going to call not? it? Why <laughs> not? We'll probably have it another. Yeah, another yeah. name. Yeah. But probably as an associate, 
or you know. yeah, or start our own mm-hmm. kind of yeah. Looking Which lab are you going to use? You thinking about yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> one dental lab. She better yeah. Super. It's gonna be problems <laughs> if she don't. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Well, you yeah. came by and yeah. said you were fans. Thank yes. you for listening to yeah, our podcast. You. Now yes, you're going to be like, hear yourself <laughs> and talk about how you <laughs> met and everything you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool to meet you both. Uh, Let me guess, too. every night at dinner, just tooth, 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 oh, tooth. Every tooth. day, Probably. all the time. Yep. Yep. Our yeah. kids know Family what a central business. is, what a canine <laughs> is, what a denture repair means. Yeah. Are you grooming new employees with these children? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Future, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's yep. absolutely. You have They're very to artistic. Yeah. Very artistic. They the te- love their... Their teachers even talk about how skilled they are. They're like, what do like you guys <laughs> do for a living? And I'm like, oh, let, let us tell us. <laughs> let us tell you about it. Your kid was drawing a cent. What is that? It's a tooth. <laughs> okay, I got it. Yeah. Your son said curve of speed. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Yeah. So Enjoy happy the you meeting. Sat down. Yes. Yeah. Same Thank here. You we'll guys. talk to you later. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Don't mind if I take an occasional sip. Not at all. Same. Not at all. Sergio. Ed McLaren. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Well, you know, it's interesting. You know how serendipitous. That is right there. I'm meeting with the new dean of LSU April 24th to start a lab school at LSU. Mm. And you know I had a full-time pro, pro, uh, two and three years. What I'm finding is, as wonderful as that was, I really limited myself. This good stuff for live yeah, stuff. We'll get to it in a second. Um, so I, I, I limited myself because the technicians, are, you know, they don't have the socioeconomic means of dentists with their rich parents or whatever. Not all of them. So anyway, I designed a program. It's already designed. It's two years, two weeks on, tw- wow. ten weeks off. Two weeks on, ten weeks off. And so a lot of lab owners will be willing to send their, their people, let's say, uh, or maybe a young technician that's got his own little lab or something like that. And the idea is we would not take an absolute beginner. They'd either have to spend two years in a, um, in a community college kind of program or two years in the business. So look for that to start. We're going to try and start it in September. Sweet. So we'll tell Marco that I'm going to be there, man. Okay. And I'll let him know. All right. All right. Good to see you. All right. Good to see you, buddy. Okay. Take care. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right, guys. Can and we gals? get back to us yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, That's I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> All right. Are we live or are you taping this? No, no it's we'll recorded. let you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. I love live because live, you know, it's like this, but okay. That's uh, why we love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're a podcast. We don't do things live. Yeah. Here we are at Iva Car Ball, Iva Clar Ballroom at Chicago Lab Day 2024, and we have. Ed Finally, McLaren. I think we've been wanting to talk to you for at least two years. Oh my God, I'm in <laughs> trouble now. I'm probably in trouble now. Yeah. Well, great to be here, guys. So you're Thank basically you. the the technician's dentist, right? I mean, yeah. you, you fill both of those roles. Yeah, I just love doing it. I was the type of kid when I I like I did the model airplanes and the little figurines and stuff like that. And so when I had the opportunity, uh, when I actually got out of school, I did my own gold work before I went to Pross because I thought that was cool <laughs> when gold was popular. Yeah, so it was yeah. like oh, 40-ish yeah. years ago. And then I studied with John Sorensen at UCLA. John's around here somewhere. He's, a, he's at UW now. And John was one of the very first guys in minimalistic restorations that was a prosthodontist, you know, doing veneer inlays and onlays out of Empress in those days. Interesting. Wow. And that yeah, was yeah. just so cool for me. And then I had a guy named Wayne Mito who is the full-time technician. And I just made sure I got the seat next to Wayne. So I said, Wayne, that's cool. So basically Wayne taught me. Uh, and then I learned from people like the Gellers, the Siebers, Klaus Mutertes. And, and so to me, I, lo- I mean, that's my favorite part. Honestly, I, I love doing the ceramics. I just wish it paid as well as cutting little holes in <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Those little holes make a lot of money. So you uh-huh. were a dentist first? I was a dentist first. Yes, I'm dyslexic. I started as a dentist, and yep. then now I'm probably 80% of my time I'm doing lab work. 20% wow. Percent, 20 really? 20 percent so time. how does that work, though? Who are you doing lab work for? For me. Okay, for my patients. I, I, I see Sweet. patients one day a week. And then now I occasionally do some lab work for some friends of mine. Uh, you know, if it's the right case, the right patient. And, and the problem with the average general dentist, and I understand it, okay, is even dentists that, that consider themselves higher end, they'll call me on, you know, Tuesday and says, can I send you the case Wednesday? Can it be here Monday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome to our life. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah exactly. so, you know, it's it, the, the reality of that. And, I, and, you know, in the digital space, if you have a, lab, a good lab, I mean, you could probably turn high-end work around fairly quickly. But I say, no, my, my standard, if I'm going to do it, is six weeks. And some say yes. And then when I tell them how much I'm going to charge for it, I usually don't hear from them, <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Okay? Which is fine with me. 
So what is the material of choice for veneers? Obviously, you're speaking well, for Ivoclar. Yeah, so okay, so I mean, I've, I've been known for doing veneers. I was one of the very first guy to do no prep veneers. I remember. And I would say I've done over 10,000 for, for, since 1983. I started my first veneer in 1983. And I kept pretty good records because I was in, you know, I did school, uh, universities for 22 years and now 18 years private practice on and on between university stints. And I, and I know that I did more because I kept pretty good records. I had very low failure rate of feldspathic veneers. But, but the reality is, is, is that the skill set's being lost. And, you know, many of the dentists today, if not most, really don't know how to do bonding at its highest level. One of the things people don't understand about bonding is, is that clearly bonding's for attention, right? But the number two reason to have a bond is for stress distribution. When you have two things laminated together and you load that system, it's by definition a constant strain system. The material that's the stiffer material, yep. typically the tooth absorbs okay, more of the yeah. stress. Right. So if you don't have a good bond, the material is more is more the stress. And so this is one of the reasons porcelain veneers break. So it's a little bit of a challenge, significant challenge to teach people, okay? But then beyond that, it's it's like, okay, if you don't have a dentist that really knows occlusion, really knows, that, and I'm not, I can pick on dentists because I'm a dentist. I can pick, <laughs> I can, yeah. You can pick on your own, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, yeah. a process on us. I can, I can pick on technicians too for some of the things they do wrong. So having coming back to your question, okay? So I kind of resisted a lot of this stuff for years, digital monolithic ceramics, just because I could do so much with feldspathic oh, yeah. and then and then uh, you know, about 2015 I said you know the reality is I got to teach this other stuff because my my technicians they couldn't get jobs you know let's say yeah. some of them could if they had the highest level so I said wait a minute I, I need to focus a little bit more on monolithics okay lithium disilicates you know machinable yeah. feldspathics yeah. and really see if I can master it so I've been about nine years working with it now and, I, and I've got it I could show you a case a technician or a dentist a case and if we're standing page next to each other. I could do a layered case and if I really took the time and did a good job and understand what I was doing with layering either Emacs or maybe Empress CAD okay, yep, or Empress yep. Multi yep. the conversational distance you could not tell the difference between the two. Interesting. Okay? I'm a ceramist so, by the yeah, way. Okay great okay and so you know you know that I mean yep. but it takes a little energy it doesn't just come out of the machine where dentists have lost it and deans of dental schools have lost it honestly they think what's going to come out of the machine is done. Well what comes out of the machine looks like a bad shade guide yeah. at that point and <laughs> it takes it takes a human to finish yep. it a human to understand how to center it if it's zirconia yeah. a human to understand how how to colorize it i mean maybe 20 30 for years from now we're going to have ai dentists are foaming at the mouth and i and i tell them oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Scary. when they aim, wait, if it's that good, then they're, they're not going to need you either. Okay, they'll have some robot that's going to prep the teeth, not you. So, so that was the interest. So, I got to tell you today, probably, oh God, I would say more than ninety percent uh, is either Emacs or Empress aesthetic or Empress multi, which is a feldspathic block. Okay, now are there other materials just as good? And I, I said this in my lecture. Sure, there, there's some other companies materials out there are just as good. But it's an interesting thing happens after, when you're at this long enough period of time. You know, you'll find company A is a great material, company B, company C, okay, and you try and save five or ten cents. Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, but then all of a sudden you find out that if a company doesn't have good support. I mean, if you don't have somebody you can rely on, and since I teach, I need to talk to people that understand what I'm doing. And yep. then, you know, some companies used to teach for, they'll go nameless. Three weeks later, they got a new CEO. And yeah. next, next, next year, <laughs> yep. they, got a, they got a new this. And so I'm, I'm dealing My with- My rep is different every week. <laughs> every week, okay? <laughs> and so ultimately, that becomes more important. That becomes more important. So one of my reasons I've done a lot of work with Ivoclar, and I don't work for Ivoclar. Okay? No, we get you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but but uh, it's this, they're stable. I'm working with George Tyskowski for 40 years now. Yeah. Okay, Sashi Salingi, whatever you pronounce his last yeah, yeah, name. Just I, Sashi. Yeah, yeah, I just call him S2. Okay, for fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he went. He, he was at UAB before I was teaching there, so he's been very stable. John Isherwood. Okay? Oh yeah. Yep. Jeff Love Smith. Him. So yep. the people that I'm dealing with, Tom yes. Hill. Okay, they've been there as long as I've been uh, more than 10, 20 years. Yeah. So to me, that, that has become a more important issue. Yeah. That if I'm teaching a course, I'll call up and say, hey, Sashi, I need some materials in a the course. They're there. 
some other companies that like they sell a bunch of crap because I talk to them. I talk yeah. about their stuff. I call them up. Well, fill out a piece of paper and send a request <laughs> and, and fill out triplicates yeah. and, and fill out a sunshine act. And I said, you can do this with your yeah. sunshine. Okay? Up yours. <laughs> and, 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 uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it has to be easy. Yeah. You know, in the teaching space, a dentist makes damn good money and I can make great money. But if I'm taking time off to teach, I can't treat patients. Yeah. And I'm doing some research. You make nothing doing research the way I do it. I don't charge for it. So all of that stuff. So I can't waste time dealing with people that aren't reliable. Yep. Reliable. Yep. So anyway, that's the story. Practice. My practice right now is in Park City, Utah. It used oh, to be okay. In, oh, I used to be in, in California. No, I was okay. there until 2019. Okay. okay. So I have a little practice. I do one day. Well, it's a big office, but I'm, there's other people in the office. I do one day a week, private patients. Then a couple of days a week, I'm doing uh, lab work for those patients. How do you select those patients to get such quality lab work? I mean, is it just anyone that signs up to be well, your patient, or, or are they selected? Okay, or? so a couple of ways I'll work with the patient. Okay, so I do. I typically do four live patient courses a year. So if it's a cool case and I want to do it and they can't afford me, I, if they're willing to sit for the course. But that's a lot of stress on them, and they have to come at that time, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So that's how I get that. And the rest of oh, them Oh, you are, do it live in, on stage. Well, not on stage, but in, in, a, in a training center. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, filmed so, and, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You, well, yeah. filmed and people are sitting there doing. I'm prepping the case for Dennis, and I'm cementing the case, and the technicians were doing the case. Oh, okay. wow. So it's a pretty intense course yeah. with very little sleep for three or four or five yeah, days. No to but the patient gets it for free. Yeah, they get it for free. That's a nice deal. I used to charge a little bit for that, but I have found that if I charge them 10 cents, then they're they're complaining about this. And if, if they're, if they're getting <laughs> yeah, it for free, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, okay? To, yeah. to, so that's how I'll do it. Now, my, my fee-for-service patient, it's just whatever. Now, in L.A., I had zero problem charging. Well, you know, you always have a little problem well, if your right. fees are high. Yeah. But i, I got to tell you, the people that, co- that are referred internally to me, and it, it, it's an interesting thing. If some dentist down the street or patient, hey, go see Ed, okay? It's always a problem because they, they, they're, not, they're just there because a friend told them to and like their smile. So when I tell them what they charge, which obviously has to be more than the local people, okay, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's like coronary time, right? I got to resuscitate them when they find out what the, <laughs> uh, the, the better, you know, the, the, usually most of my patients that are willing to pay my fee, and it's, it's not exorbitant. I charge half of what I used to charge in L.A., but it's still double what the person down yeah. the street charges. If they're referred to me and they're willing to hop on an airplane, they're, they generally go for it. Okay? Oh, wow. And but, but, the, but, they're, but they're referred from, you know, top sources, right? Heck yeah. Ed, educators and universities. Absolutely. That, that type. So yeah. That's, that's how the system works. Yeah. Yeah. And you find it better to restore these patients knowing that you're doing the lab work. Right. Because there's no loss of communication no, or exactly, anything. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I realize that's not the real world, okay? Uh, that, uh, you know, very few dentists, it's, it's funny how many think they want to try. Oh, yeah. And uh, then find out, hey, this is actually... Very really technically hard. demanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, if you remember Malcolm Caldwell's book, what was it called, Outliers? He says in his book that you need a minimum of 5,000, ideally 10,000 hours to master something. Well, you work roughly 2,000 hours in a year, so it's an absolute minimum of two and a half years to become a master ceramist, which I think it's five years. I think you need about five oh, yeah, years to really sure. master your craft. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, I, do, I don't do it to make money. I mean, I could make a lot more money if I was just a dentist. I do it yeah. because I love doing it. No, sure. And, yeah, you know, at the, at the, at the, uh, listen, what I try and teach dentists, like I said, since I'm all of those things, I said, dentists, I said, God, no matter what they charge, within reason, okay, uh, is a great technician will sell dentistry for you. And, and you know what? You send a patient, let's say, or even virtually today, which is great. You can yeah. do all that stuff. Maybe you diagnose four veneers. And the technician looks at it and says, you know, it would really be a nicer case if we did 10. And here's why. Not trying to oversell, but right. if we want to get maximum aesthetics. They just sold six veneers for you that you were afraid to talk to the dentist about. Yeah. And then if you try to sell them the 10 veneers, you're overselling them. Yeah. Okay? So the, 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 a great relationship with a high-end technician is phenomenal for a dentist. Now... Obviously, you're not going to have an A-list anterior technician do your second molars. So I, I tell Dennis, you need yeah. two labs, okay? You yep. need, a, need a lab that does good work for your posterior teeth. You're happy occlusally. You're yeah. happy drops fit. In, and, yeah. yeah, drops yeah. in. Okay, then you need an artist for your front teeth. So that's, I love that's that. the model. That's the model. So yeah. for all of our listeners that have never seen your movies, how the heck did you get into that? Oh, God, that's a Was that show. your brainchild? I'm sure mm-hmm. it was. Okay, so I've made Is there eight more than movies. one? I've done eight, oh, yeah. eight, eight movies that would qualify as Hollywood They're character. They're sweet. We saw oh, one at I the just event. saw, I only know of one. Well, no, okay, go to Ed, Mc, I have two YouTube channels, and I'm still trying to figure this out. One's Edward <laughs> McLaren, one is Ed McLaren. So on Ed McLaren, my YouTube channel, yeah. Ed, okay, you'll see there's about five of them there. 
Uh, I, I, I typically wait for a couple of years to, yeah. to get a little little mileage out of it at one of these meetings, and then I'll put it up there. Now, a couple of them they took down because I was using some Rolling Stones music, and they didn't like that. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so how it started, about 2000, I started to learn digital like everybody right around then. That was sort of the start of digital cameras. And then, you know, I learned a little bit about After Effects and Photoshop, so I just started using images of my work. And travels and fun stuff which you see everybody doing now right oh, yeah. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. all right and I, I beat i beat everybody to the punch and it was just so much fun i was having fun doing that okay so you, you do that for four or five years and that actually kind of got boring and then somebody says to me uh hey paul how you doing uh somebody somebody <laughs> says see, it's live yeah, yeah told you yeah somebody <laughs> somebody says to me hey Ed, why, don't, why don't you do something with some people in it some so i thought okay if i was going to do something cool the first one was in 2008 i thought ceramic i thought you know, Star Wars was kind of everywhere. The second round was at one, two, and three yeah, came yeah, out yeah, from, yeah. in the those prequels. days. And I thought, yeah. hey, we'll do something called Ceramic Wars. Okay, so that's yeah. where it started. Mm-hmm. God, it was 92000 That was a lot of money because I didn't know any people in Hollywood, so they charged me rack rate. And so anyway, I thought, let's do it in 3D, okay? So we did it in 3D. You and it was filmed super, it in 3D? Yeah, that yeah. was, was $7,500 a day to rent the camera oh. in those days, okay? So that's when it was just coming out. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I had the bad guy was Darth Pulp Killer, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the Pulp Death Star, you know, that was that was really awesome. Did you write all these? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, it's not that hard when you when you have a concept in your mind yeah. and you just figure out how you're going to relate it to what you do. And and I didn't, you know, obviously I didn't think of Star Wars. So, so I, I did Raiders of the Lost Art. Raiders, yeah. Lo- like yeah. the Raiders Lost Ark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did what's called The Source with a uh, uh, twist on the Matrix. I've done three Star Wars movies. Okay. Uh, one was uh, Ceramic Wars. Uh, Return yeah, of the Ceramics. Another cool. one was uh, re, uh, st- uh, uh, Ceramic Wars, The Last Crusade. Yeah. And then I did another one. I can't remember the name of it right now. And then I'm work. I actually wrote a script for a new one called to steal from the new movies called Ceramic Wars: uh, The Last Jedi or Last Ceramics or something. Yeah, like yeah. That, okay? How the hell do so, you find the time? I, well, basically, I, I don't do anything you don't sleep, else. Right? Yeah, I don't sleep enough, man. I didn't sleep well last night. So. Uh, anyway, what happened? You know, it's that becomes your hobby, right? Yeah, you get only into so it. much you get time. Passionate about so some, it. Yeah. Some dentists play golf six hours a week. I make movies. Okay, so I, I don't do any of that stuff. I do teeth movies and I work out a little bit, yeah. a little bit of my karate. So that's how it all started, and then it's developed its own life, actually, to tell you the truth, where people now are expecting it. And, yeah. and like I'll do a lecture today, the room fills up. You can see there's only 20 people in there now. They watch the movie and they leave, but at least you know oh, it's, it's fun. Got to so, end with the movie. Yeah. Well, no. I, <laughs> Well, actually, that's what I, I I used to do that, but it was too much work to make two movies. I'd made an intro and an exit movie. So. Oh, yeah, so. they showed uh, the ceramics never die. Yeah, Is that I did the name that of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. TTG. That yeah. was cool. Well, yeah. okay, I showed the new version here. Okay, so that was 19 minutes. So that's a little long for a, for a, for me. It was me, pretty okay. sexy. I liked it. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I so I re-edited it to make it like a music video. You know, uh, what's called a super trailer, where you still see the whole story. Okay, but oh. it's, it's bouncing around a little bit. So it played today. I played it today. It was nine, nine minutes and 20 seconds. So awesome. That's what's gone on. So That's cool. And so uh, you're working on another Star Wars movie? No, oh, I have a script for a Star Wars movie. Okay. Have you thought about Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know that I'm going to ever get to that. You get to a point, man, it's getting re- they're really expensive. Yeah. That and, sounds like and it. And I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid-60s, okay? So it, it's, I, I put a lot of time and energy into sure. that, okay? And so the next movie I'm going to shoot, it looks like, uh, is going to be called Ceramic Sensei, The Last Karate Kid. Oh, so it's going go. yeah. to be a fun twist, fun twist on the Karate Kid. Yep. Okay? Yep. So yeah, I was going to call it the Karate, karate Grandfather because I'm actually being the one trained, okay? But I thought, hey, that'd be kind of boring. And then I got another movie in the queue that I was going to shoot a couple years ago uh, and when I was in better shape than I was now, actually, and starving myself to get a little more cut, I wrote a movie called The Dental Expendables. Oh, okay. there you go. So I play a Stallone-ish character. Actually, I'm going to call the Dental Expendables the new A-Team. Now, I need, I need tanks for this, and Jeez. I need attack helicopters. So I have a dentist friend that he can organize those in Russia. Wow. And we were going to shoot a couple years ago, but... <laughs> That's crazy. Un- unfortunately, the world events... That's big time. Uh, yeah. ...prevented me from... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Not too easy it. to go to I'll Russia say. right now. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. No. That is great. Uh, do people write scripts for you? No, I no write the scripts. No one's like presented a story to you to try to get you to. Well, do Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, dentists or they'll come up. Hey, why don't you do this? Hey, why don't <laughs> well, you? Do I, that? I already pitched Star Trek. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, these are time intensive. I would say that I probably put a thousand hours, so oh, six months of time into one, and I've done.
run one every two years or maybe a little shorter. And so then, you know, on top of that, I, that takes away from the ability to make money too, right? Yeah. And then, and then I'm, I'm the producer. Uh, I'm usually, act, I'm, I've acted in all of them, okay? And so what you, I'm doing all the, produ- the work. Yeah. And then uh, to keep the cost down, and, and about as cheap as you can make a really high-quality movie is about $50,000. That's mm-hmm. as cheap as, and that's where you're doing, you're, 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 you're contacting everybody. You're, you're buying the water bottles. You're, yep. you're getting the sound people. You're doing whatever, okay? And that's paying very minimal for actors. Now, typically, the, the dentist actors or technician actors in my movies, I don't pay. But I usually have to, if I have to get some extras, they typically rack rate in Hollywood is about $300, $350 a day. So I got to find those people, and then I got to find sound people. If, if I'm overseas, which I do, I've done most of them overseas yeah. somewhere, it doesn't make sense to fly my sound people there, okay? Yeah. Sure. Or fly, fly my, my yeah. electrical people, my lighting people. So usually I just find people there. But then that's another challenge, okay? I shot yeah. in Egypt about a, a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And, you know, 9 o'clock to the Egyptian culture means 9, 10, 11. So I got a, I got a film crew there. I got my, my, my uh, cinematographer who is the, what's called DP. It's director of photography. And we're waiting for two hours. Nobody's there. I'm paying a bunch of people. So, I mean, it's a fun challenge. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun challenge. So. But the, what you put out, it's fun. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure the industry appreciates. Oh, heck yeah. The highlight. I do. Of yeah. it in, no, in they a fun love it. setting. Yeah. They love it. So it's interesting. Sometimes I, uh, when I've lectured some of these more, let's say, uh, like American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry, I'm lecturing at the American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry in, in August, okay? Yep. And uh, I showed my one before, one of the movies that one of those I lectured at 10, 12 years ago. Then I'm, I'm in lecture at European Academy. So the president of the academy, and I leave names off, he goes, Ed, we'll, we're going to let you lecture, but you can't show a movie. <laughs> Why? I've, I've had that before. Why? Because these are a bunch of... Stuffy. Stuffy, yeah. old... People, yeah. okay, yeah. that don't that get. So I, I said to him, I said, but you know, my e- movies are related to to dentistry, and it, and it helps attract people. His response was, "We're a serious group." <laughs> wow. And I go, okay. All right. And I said, you know, you, you want to tell them, I'm probably going to attract 100 people to your meeting that's going to buy tickets, okay? Because that's really what happens. So I was, at, I was lecturing at the European Academy of Dentistry almost 10 years ago now, right? And, and, and so they told me no movies. So I left a movie out in case there was five, six hundred people there. And was the people in, wanted in Greece. them, right? Well, here's what happens. Yep. A bunch of, you know, the young students and stuff that are just fresh in dentists come up and they said, are you playing a movie? And I said, no, they won't let me play the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't beat anybody up. And yeah, say, yeah, hey. yeah. They said, I'm sorry, they, you can't play the movie. And so they, not me, those people, about a hundred of them, went to the thing, said, listen, we're boycotting the meeting if, if you don't show the movie. Show. So they come up to me, so what'd you do? Did you do this? I said, I had nothing to do with it, dude. They asked me if I was going to play a movie. I, I told them no. the truth. Yeah. yeah, and they said, why? I said, because you told me not to. Yeah. Okay, I respect you. He goes, play the damn movie. He was, he was angry. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay, so we did. Won we that did. battle. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, I'm not That's trying to win story. the battle, but you know, here's the other interesting thing, okay? We started with all this business 40, 50, 60 years ago, lecturing with 35-millimeter slides. Oh, sure. With cool information, and people started to learn. Okay, now we're in a completely different space today. We're competing for so much attention of people. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and if you don't have some entertainment value, I don't care if you're telling about the newest thing on earth or the newest thing on earth you might want, but everybody understands in the marketing space today, if you want to capture people's attention, you better make them feel good. You better entertain them a little bit. They you need better it. make a Hollywood-style movie. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, or something cool. It's I mean, true. Yeah. You cannot yeah. see an ad anywhere today without some attention grabber oh right? yeah okay and i don't know if you saw but i mean what is there 40 50 60 people in there when i when i the room fills up okay because they want to see the movie yeah and my material is not that much different than anybody else's good material but they're there that's the hook the hook the me- movie uh, fills them up fills the room and then they stay and listen to lecture have you ever thought about putting all five of your movies together and have an event where we could all sit and watch all yeah, of them? Yeah, we could do that. We can organize that. I think that would be cool. Because yeah, yeah. like I said, I only knew of the one. I didn't know you did so many. I did eight. I've done eight. Eight. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. yeah. You put them all together. What is I would, that? I would love to do that. Kind of like a film festival. Yeah. Now, people always ask, if you ever want to submit these to a film festival, here's the problem I ran into, okay? Since I use music from original movies. Uh-huh. And you uh-huh. use their yeah. themes Some and ideas. Well, the, 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 the theme is okay. They don't get you for that. But if you use original content, Content. Here's where they get you. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. Michael Eisner, former CEO of Disney, yeah. okay, he would sue anybody 
that had a likeness of Mickey Mouse or anything Disney. And he went after him. He didn't care if it was yeah. a daycare center with yeah. a bunch of old people. So it finally went to the Supreme Court. Somebody finally challenged and The Supreme Court came down with a ruling that said, listen, and they called it the parody law. So it says, as long as you're not degradating the brand, okay, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're not charging for it. And you're not claiming to be that brand. Yeah, and you're not claiming to be there, yeah. and you're not charging for it, you get a pass. So I checked with an attorney. They can't do anything to me unless I charge for it. Okay? Oh, so yeah. if somebody else is paying to be in the audience, that's nothing to do with me. Okay, Interesting. But if I'm not making uh, uh, any, any money back from it, then, then I don't run into any legal issues. That doesn't mean they can't try to sue. But they, but they wouldn't. But you win. haven't, have you? No, God, okay. I haven't. No, even talked to me. Okay, okay that's because great. my they don't denigrate anything. So the nice thing is that that spreads the word a little bit. The only thing that happened was on YouTube. A couple of the movies got taken down by YouTube because I don't know. The Rolling Stones complained, Too much sex. and no, no, even, no, no, no. I even don't our do. podcast, we use theme music that I bought. Yeah, and YouTube yeah. still says it's copyrighted. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. Right. I mean, <laughs> well, that was the other thing too. My movie partner, okay, that's fully in Hollywood. Uh, my and so we started a company together. So he said, well, we can do original scores if you want to get around it and play it at a film festival. Do an original score. And I looked into what that would cost. Oh, I could imagine. <laughs> and and you know the other thing is is I, I'm purposely trying to make a connection to something that people already know. So, you know, the fact that they can hear Indiana Jones movie, the fact that they can hear James Bond movie, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That's, that's an attraction. And, sure. and, and my goal is not to make money or do a film festival. My goal is to, to get people into my lectures. But, do you, yeah, Everybody these does. movies aren't going to work outside of our industry. No. no yeah. No, no, you got you to know your sure. audience. No, you got to know your audience. Yeah. yeah so. I would yeah. love to see all eight. Presented oh, we're going to pull them up. We'll pull up YouTube. Right yeah, there. you can done. see the ones on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to sit down somewhere with other technicians <laughs> yeah. and watch all eight have of a them. Party. Popcorn, yeah. make yeah. a big deal We can, we can like do an that. Have, event. A, have an intermission, you know, like yeah. Yeah. after three or something like that. Like as soon as Lab Day ends, we all go into a ballroom and watch. The, I okay. think it would be cool. Right. Right. How my about we do it here? My only fear is nobody would come. Yeah. Hey, you know, someday Ivan Claire wants to sponsor. That's not a bad thing. There right? you go. So. Well, it's out there. They know about it now. Yeah, yeah. they do. Oh, well, great. Yeah, Ed McLaren, thank well, you thanks. so much for sitting thanks, guys. down. Thanks I for appreciate sitting it. Down. Wait, we forgot. What are you talking about here in Ivan Claire? We got. Oh, talk- I well, I showed the movie and yeah. I talked about my digital workflow, mm. but I also talked about some research I did with uh, with Ivan Claire materials on their lithium disilicate and also on their new zirconia prime aesthetics. Love and, that. And then I and then I related it to how I finish. Okay, because it's not just the material. It's how I use the materials. I talk from a dentist perspective, what the dentist needed to know about the digital space, okay, uh, that are adaptions, which they really haven't heard. And then the last thing I talked about was what I call the final touch. How I take what comes out of a machine and put the humanistic touches in it that brings it to life. So that was the the top the fun of the part. The, fun the part. occlusion, do you stain or polish? Okay, so, the big, the, the, well, no, here's a big issue about a clue. I mean, obviously, you, if you stain, it's, it's microscopically rough. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize and I'm going to glaze the facial of restorations. Yeah. Okay, anterior teeth. It's, it, it's, it's the posterior, and that's, I don't do the lingual. I just polish, okay? Yeah. For crowns, bicuspid, something like that, where you've got a cuspid occlusion, I, I colorize glaze, and I just polish the cusp tip real well, so the glaze is gone. Yep. So oh, wherever nice. I'm going to have a centric Biting stop, I've surface, polished it exceptionally yeah. well. Interesting. Okay. So it's not it's just great that advice. either or. Yeah. So yeah. it's a little bit of both. It's taking a, it's taking advantage of why you would glaze, why you would colorize, but also understanding the 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 dynamics of the occlusal issues with glaze. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Interesting. All right, we guys. Well, thank you. All right, thank you well, so thank, much, sir. Thanks for having we me, guys. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we got an old timey guest here who's been on what three, four? How many times have you been? Oh, on? ten. I think yeah, no, I think no. three times. Three times. Three times. Yeah. I think so. Patrick well, it's great to have Allen. you back, Patrick Allen, the greatest denturist ever. <laughs> ever. Easy now, easy. Because okay. you know we're denturist fans, Absolutely. of course. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's going what's on, up? Patrick? Oh, everything all at once. Yeah. Uh, no, it it never stops, right? Yeah, sure. So, it shouldn't stop because yeah. when you stop, you die. So, you don't no. stop till you get all fifty states, right? <laughs> that's that's where it's going. Yeah, yeah you got to give us an update. All right. What's so up? In my uh, uh, spare time that I've been trying to procure, yeah, uh, I've been uh, helping out the Illinois. Uh, we Ninja love them. Oh, Mandy and Katie. Yeah, yeah. Katie. So, uh, so yeah, they, they're uh, really making some, some good inroads. Uh, we had a, a really good uh, reception at the National Denturist meeting. They made a lot of friends, got a lot of donations. Everyone's really supportive of the cause. Cool. 
we, we kind of formulated a plan to come here and yeah. make some more friends and try to get some more yeah, support. Yeah, they have a booth downstairs. They have a booth. We just visited it. I yeah. gave both hugs. And they, said had, they, go. got, they look busy. And so they one do. of the things that we've been, we've been really working on is just trying to, to get some presence and get, get seen. And we had a lot of we had huge support from uh, some great technicians like Stefan Rohrbach. Uh, oh, yeah. Table demonstration. Um, uh, Nina, you'll have to pardon yep. me because I can't. Freakington. Freakington. There yes. we go. No worries. She's so great. I only yeah. know because I had to practice. We love it. Yes, <laughs> many times. And he still does it wrong. And Dora Rodriguez. Yeah, yep. Dora yes, Rodriguez. saw her today. Yep. She's amazing. So we had a lot of a, a lot of support, a lot of people who uh, who, who are championing the cause. And, sure. And helping uh, helping make this a uh, this a uh, this a thing and be seen. So. Yeah. So when you talk about the Illinois, uh, we, we're probably going to talk to them tomorrow. But like, how much longer do they have to go? Like, what do they have to go through still? Uh, you know, it, it's 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 funny you ask. I know you know. Well, if you know, you know. Well, kind of. Um, it, so they they have a bill, and we've been in in touch with the Illinois Dental Association. And one of the things that that we've wanted to do is try to do this as much as we can in partnership. You know, we want to we want to uh, not take anything away from from dentists or dentistry. We want to be a partner in this. Right. And that is the the ideal way to go about it. So the the meeting that we had with the Illinois Dental Association, you know, we were very clear. Like th- there's a, there's a limitations to a denturist scope of practice. Um, sure, we take impressions, we take bite registrations, but we're not cutting rest preps for teeth. Right. Uh, you know, for partials. Right. You know, we're not altering uh, things. Also, if they have teeth remaining, then uh, you know, the first thing we do is we we refer them out to uh, to a dentist for that that checkup. Uh, you know, we're enforcing. You know, trying to get people to keep so the teeth they have. So, yeah. uh, trying to help Which them I love, understand. By that, the way. Yeah, we um, we want to uh, we want to enhance dentistry, not take anything away from it. So, uh, so we had we had a uh, uh, I think a, a good initial uh, meeting, and um, I think before they go too much more forward with presenting the bill um, to the legislature, um, you know, getting on the same page. What we w- want to make sure of is that we don't have any opposition. The, yes, the process for of sure. Uh, of of uh, pursuing legislation is is a uh, it's it's a it's, expen- it's daunting. It is it's expensive. It's, it's long. It's rigorous. It. And There's a lot of elements there. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to try to, if we can, have an ally uh, rather than an opposition. So right now that's kind of where we're at is trying to, to get some some form of uh, um, you know uh, an agreement or acquiescence uh, from you guys. from them. So. And there's no better supporter than you because you've been down that road. And so to have you on their side, to be able to kind of walk them through everything. That's it. It's yeah. awesome for That's them. It. Any yeah. other states in the process? Yeah. So um, we've got a, a gentleman who actually just joined the National Dentures Board, uh, Dario Zuniga. Okay. He actually works in-house with a prosthodontist. They totally see the value in, uh, in having a, a denture scope of practice. So, uh, same thing. I'm wearing my old NDA shirt that yep. says, "What does it say?" Ask me about dentures. I right? know that's what I saw when I walked up. So we went uh, earlier. My daughter, uh, she's with us, and uh, she loves to go to like high tea. So there's a hotel down the street that does like a yeah. high tea with little, uh, you know, little cookies, and and uh, so we went and did that. And then out of the blue, uh, someone comes up and kind of like slaps me on the shoulder. And it's a uh, prosthodontist uh, that works at uh, uh, a school in New York. Mm. And uh, he said, I love what you guys are doing. And so I think there's, there's a lot of old thoughts that uh, dentistry and prosthodontics, they, they, you know, we, we, we can't work together. We can't appreciate one another. And uh, it's a different time. It's a different place. And, wow. you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, a, a certain level of acceptance and, uh, and understanding. And, you know, we just have to uh, continue to make inroads and, uh, you know, and, and be, be seen in a positive light and, yeah. you know, take the mantle. Which so I what feel, are the other yeah. states that are working on it? Uh, so uh, there is a gal who she's just started a uh, denturist association uh, in Virginia. Oh, nice. Uh, so uh, and then there, there's been a handful of technicians in Michigan uh, that have had some interest. But, uh, you know, it's, again, trying to get a coalition of people um, that can kind of go through the steps in the process. So but, that's yeah. what we're doing is just trying to foster that yeah. because, uh as an outsider, it's very difficult to go into a place that 
isn't your home mm -hmm. and try to talk to legislators and say, oh, this is what we should do. Yeah. Um, you really need a, a homegrown coalition to be able yeah. to, uh, to that, execute that. Yeah. And yeah. not only that, but you need a homegrown coalition that's politically minded. Yeah. And, you know, they have to be that side of their brain. Not only are they technicians, but you've got to be into politics. You have to know what to do and all of the rules and all of the red tape, and there's a lot to it. And that's it. So one, one of the things that uh, a lot of people have said is why not do a, uh, a national uh, effort, or, you know, a national bill, if you will. And at the end of the day, every state has its own you know, rules, regulations, states' yeah. rights. If we were to tackle a, a national initiative, um, you know, even if it got passed, you may see some, you know, some pushback. And, you know. So yeah. it, 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 I think it is something that has to be uh, kind of uh, attempted one state at a time yeah. so it can be, uh, you know, built in its own way. Yeah. yeah. And then you pull people in like you that have been through it, and you can kind of pull all those things together and be able to help advise them. Right, so, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so no, that's that's kind of where we're at right now. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's definitely a lot of interest, and in, it's events like this at, at Chicago LMT that are going to uh, that are going catapult to catapult it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to be able to make friends and be able to uh, start to expand the uh, the interest and sure, the, you know. Uh, get and I think you are yeah. being here, especially. You're going to have five, six thousand technicians that are going to walk by that booth tomorrow and check it out and ask about it. Yeah. And I mean, there is no better press than that. Well, that and, and so like one of the other initiatives that I'm working on back home in Maine is uh, getting uh, getting into high schools and trying to get uh, uh, young people interested. That's in, a great idea. Yeah, it is. Well, one of the things I'm really focusing on, too, is because we have such a need also for dental technicians, not everybody wants to go and work direct with the patient, work in the mouth. But there's a lot of people. My, my sister, who is a denturist, um, she... Uh, she hasn't given up her license, but she has no desire to practice directly with patients anymore. Yeah. She wants to go into the lab, put her headphones on, yeah. and grind yeah. and polish on dentures. There ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that. It takes a certain skill to want to deal with a patient and live and talk to them and all of that. Not, it's not made for everybody, yeah. that's yeah. for sure. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things, though. Uh, we have such a need. We could, in Maine, we could, we could triple our numbers and still not have enough uh, denturists to fill the need that's, that's there. That's nuts to yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, that's great. But you yourself in your private practice, you've taken on digital, right? Yes. yes. You've, I've been watching. That's on, now, that's an update. It, it is. Give it up. So, yeah, I think when we initially talked, I was just, like, dipping my toe yeah. in the water. Wow. I have fallen in. I'm, I'm soaking wet. I, I, it, we're, we're there and now. And you love it? I, I, for the most part, I do. I, I figured it, I figured out a way to kind of embrace the crazy. That's uh, cool. But it does. It, it's it's absolutely taken our our small two person practice, um, and started to afford us like it's probably shaved. A life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, to be conservative, it's probably it probably saves us somewhere between twenty and thirty hours of, of labor time a week. You know, that's we've, huge. We've All probably, of our listeners, y'all, that's huge. Yeah. So what do you do with scanning and printing dentures yeah. and designing on three shave? Yes, yes. So uh, uh, back in 2020, we, we bought a uh, an iOS and a uh, desktop. I got a Trios 3 yep. and, a, and an E4 and just kind of went along with a lot of the Canadians that I follow. Um, that's what they, that was what the hardware they were running with. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what everyone else is doing. Trios is a great scanner. But for about a year, I didn't really do much with it. We were so busy coming out of COVID. I really didn't have the time to sit down and, and put my hours in. Yeah. But I also didn't quite understand. I didn't have a mentor. So I was kind of just flying blind. And as soon as I hit a roadblock, I was like, oh, turn this thing off. Let's and get an impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. uh, after about a year, actually, when it came time to renew dongles and pay those fees, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. What, what are we doing? We got $60,000 worth of paperweights. We need to figure out uh, how to put this to work. So I went on kind of a, a, an education bender. I traveled here, there, and everywhere. Yep. Um, I think uh, we figured out I, I traveled somewhere over like 100,000 miles to uh, different, uh, went to Ireland and Canada and Australia. Oh, that Ireland guy we had on, what was his name? Paul McNally. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So, and, and it's funny because... Uh, you still get his emails. Yeah. We, <laughs> so we did a, a secondary course for the... Oh, I remember that. Suction yeah, Denture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and the, he did a larger group. Normally, the Suction Denture course is done with just two candidates at a time because yep. it's, just, it's so touchy-feely, yeah, sensitive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he did an advanced course for people that had already taken it. And uh, there was, uh, I think, six or eight of us that were there. And we were all sidebar conversations we were talking about how we'd all bought digital technology but really weren't putting it to use really uh so he said well all right guys if if we could put on a you know an introductory level course would you would you want to do it so a year later we came back and he brought german versteeg who's uh, a uh, dutch technician uh denturist he owns a huge uh lab actually i think he just sold it um, yeah. in um, in the netherlands but i think he had like six or eight pm sevens and oh uh, my wow. word yeah he's he has a, a powerhouse uh, yeah place That's a so lot. but but he's been in the game for for quite a while uh so uh that we brought him in to do uh, a, a course kind of get us going shortly thereafter uh, i left ireland i did my asiga training uh then i went to the digital study club in Kelowna. but before that i spent a week with Luke LaRocque Walker yep. and Paul Imperius. Yep. Wow. And they really pushed me up. They helped me get over a lot of roadblocks. And that's sure. what you'll find. Well, what I found with digital is one little roadblock could absolutely, like, show stop you. And you need oh, to totally. figure out how to work around it or, do, or go through it. or that's. And as the old saying awesome goes, you, uh, you don't educated. know what you don't know. Exactly. And yeah. so there's, there's simple things that I was so close yet so far away. Yeah. So they really helped me out a lot. And then I probably within three months, uh, we went from just doing uh, immediates and chromes with the iOS to now I'm designing and, you know, doing some reference denture technique and then yep. getting into... All right, how do I mishmash my analog and my digital? So uh, some of the stuff that you hear and you go, oh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I go, oh, I get it now. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So, so expand on that, though. How are you mishmashing the analog and the digital? Like how is that? Like what are you doing? What's yeah. your so, process? Uh, so every once in a while, like especially when it comes to like the SEMCD uh, uh, process, there are like times I'll have issues with being able to to draw my border as high enough so I can encapsulate enough of that uh, that peripheral roll, um, yep. you know, the the where it's so thin in, in yep. certain areas and so thick in other areas. Uh, three shape maybe struggles a bit to uh, to you know get the outline that I want. So there's times where I'll actually take and, and maybe pour a physical yep. model yep. and then scan that and bring that in. Okay. So that way I can have the Makes land sense. areas that I want. Yep. So that's really important. I can't afford to lose well, that. Well, you still have to do bite blocks to establish a vertical. You, no Sometimes. matter what digital you're doing, you still have to do that stage. Yep. I mean, yep. Yeah, um, you got to do an analog somewhere. That's it. That's it. So, uh, and, and I, I can't emphasize enough. So one of the things too, Joseph Rotoni. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's he a Hung sounds familiar. So he's a Hungarian technician that I met through. I've, I've seen his stuff online. Followed him for years. But yeah. I, uh, Paul McNally brought him in to help out with some of the uh, SEMCD stuff. And uh, but he wrote a. Uh, it's called BPS Step by Step, mm -hmm. and it is all analog. He is not a digital technician at all. Uh, he sort of gives you a funny look when you mention <laughs> it. Yeah, 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 one of those, yeah. But, yeah. but he's a Gerber-trained uh, technician. He's, he's phenomenal. And yep. his photography is great. But he wrote this book, and it really kind of does a great photo documentary hmm. of the BPS and SEMCD. Um, Which is the suction process. center. It is, yeah. So yeah. the SEMCD is based off of Ivoclar's BPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, it's not really, um, not really pushed here in the U.S., um, I think there's a sort of an attitude that Americans want it fast and cheap. This is a more kind of premium sort of methodology. But if you talk with like Stefan Rohrbach, yeah. that's, that's kind of along the line of what, what he does, you know, yeah, yeah. very kind of Gerber uh, type of uh, denture philosophy start to finish. So uh, he wrote this book. I wanted a copy, but he said, ah, I can't be shipping this all <laughs> over the world. So at one point he asked me if I'd help distribute it. And I said, well, maybe, but let me, let me talk with Ivoclar. Let me see what yeah. we can do. And the U.S. just... BPS just doesn't have that that hold here. Sure. So that's one of the things I've actually been doing here is uh, talking with the Ivy Clark crowd and uh, trying to get them to bring the book. Yeah. Well, I, I've already brought I've already brought uh, 100 copies of the book. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So that's one thing. That's um, uh, we're gonna have a, a website up for people if they wanna if they wanna purchase the book. Nice. It's, it's a fantastic fantastic book. But uh, uh, talking with the folks at Ivy Clark, they behind the scenes they are looking at bringing BPS and SEMCD uh, courses and technique to the U.S. Uh, probably 
at least three times a week, I get a message from doctors, prosthodontists, and technicians. Hey, when, are, when is there going to be BBS wow, in the yeah, U.S.? Yeah. So there's definitely a hunger for that kind of education. So to that point, uh, I've already started bringing Paul McNally and Peter Anastasia from Australia mm. to the U.S. in Bangor, uh, June 14th and 15th. We're going to do a live patient demonstration. Oh, and where? In Bangor, Maine. Wow. Okay. I know not the biggest draw, but it's where I live, and <laughs> yeah. I've got the facility for it. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah, um, this is. Uh, we, we quickly went from we were going to originally have about twenty people. We were going to do it at the hygiene school. They allow me to use their facility. Nice. Yeah. And but uh, as soon as uh, we uh, said that Peter was coming along, because Peter does not only does he uh, a BPS instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, he's SEMCD, Dr. Abe instructor, yep, yep. Uh, but he also is very digital savvy. He's kind of like, he's been in it as long as anybody. Uh, I think he ha he owns like the number two PM7. It's either in Australia or the world. I can't really? remember. Really? Wow. Yeah, he and John Batchelor got into it very early on, probably seven, eight years. So uh, there's, there's not many people that have as much uh, uh, digital acumen, but he does a BPS and SEMCD digital version. That's what I was going to ask. Can you do it digitally? So Absolutely. And Heck yeah. yeah. And, and so... Big thing with digital is the data transfer, right? Yep. Yeah, once you've recorded those impressions, once you've recorded that bite, um, you don't have to worry about acrylic, uh, you know, yeah. changing. changing. You don't have yeah. to. Yeah, you don't Nothing's have to worry about shift that. on you. Yeah. Correct. Um, teeth floating, whatever, whatever when you're processing. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so no, I think there's a lot of merit and benefit to that. I went to Australia to train with Peter back in November. I spent the week of uh, Thanksgiving taking his digital BPS course. And then that's how shortly thereafter he said, oh, mate, we ought to, we ought to do this in the States. So uh, we uh, – You said, uh, hell yeah, we do. Absolutely. Let's so, go. So and he and Paul are, are, uh, are good friends. So uh, they, uh, they're looking forward to the opportunity to try to bring this, uh, this to North America. And uh, it's going to be a great course. Sounds like you are. We're, that's for sure. We're, uh, we're loosely expecting probably uh, 70 to 100 people to attend. Yeah. Nice. Holy schmoly. Got a ton of interest. Uh, it's going to be. Can Maine handle that many more people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to, like, double the population. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's great. Yeah. I'm so excited we got for a, you. we got a lot of projects. Uh, yeah. My wife and I, and, again, all of our spare time, we're looking at, uh, at doing more Con Ed uh, courses. Yep. And everything from, you know, even just doing very basic um, you know, denture stuff for, especially for the doctors that are coming out of school that don't have a ton of hands-on. They don't have any. They don't have any, yeah. yeah. They don't have any. So, Seriously. you know, this is, is not just about denturists. It's about uh, about providing better denture care. For um, the patients. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that uh, I heard Robert Cryer say to me once is that, you know, denturists have a, a, a role. We could, we could be the denture experts, and especially where it comes to digital technology. It's one of the things I'd implore you know, all denturists to take a closer look at what digital technology not only can do for you and your practice, uh, what it can do for your patients, but also uh, what it's going to do for us as the, uh, the the digital denture experts. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's yeah. great advice. Yeah. Seriously. That's I awesome. It. I love everything that you're heading. It sounds great. Just trying to make this a better place, man. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for it. the update. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Have a great Patrick. meeting. Good luck with all the bills and all the help that you're giving to everybody yeah i wish everybody well yeah we're gonna sure you know, we're gonna do good stuff well yeah. yep. thank you guys for having every, me every every time Absolutely. man we love it Absolutely. all right patrick thank you sir thank you happy chicago huge thanks to sandy james dr mclaren and patrick for sitting down with us at the iva clark ballroom great 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 conversations and, you know, you and I both love hearing stories of married couples and dentistry making it work. And it really does sound like James and Sandy have found a really good formula for them. And they are kicking butt. I cannot wait to see where your labs are in a few years. And thanks again, Dr. McLaren, for giving us a little time in what was sure to be an extremely busy lab day for you. Be sure to check out this episode show notes to check out some of the movies that he's made over the years. They're pretty cool, got to say. Who knows? Maybe next year there will be a movie night with popcorn, snacks, and we can watch them on the big screen. I think that was your idea, wasn't it, Elvis? I love the idea. I think it would be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as always, we appreciate Patrick and all the good things he's doing for denturism. I was serious when I said that we support it, and I think it can only bring good things to patients that need dentures and partials. All right, everybody. Go check out the link for the shirts. Purchase some. It all goes to the foundation. And we will talk to you next week. See ya.
Bye. The shirts are back. The shirts are back. The shirts are back. Oh, yeah. The views and opinions expressed on the Voices from the Bench podcast are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the host or Voices from the Bench, LLC.